Hey, what's up, YouTube? I want to make a short video on how to teach English in Latin America without a college degree. Uh, this is going to be a short video, and it's not exhaustive, but here's just an example of a way to get a job without a college degree and get a, a work permit and not work for cash under the table or do anything uh, illegal if, if that bothers you. All over Latin America, it's pretty well known you can work um, under the table for cash. You don't really need a visa. I mean, most of the time, no one's going to snitch on you and kick you out of the country or anything. But in Mexico, especially in Central America, you don't really need a degree or a TESOL. Um, you should have one, but you don't really need one. In Colombia and South America, as I'm here, I'm on a Green Heart Travel. I'll put the link in the description. Anyways, um, in Colombia, they have these programs all over the country to teach English and I'll just show you a little bit um, while I'm doing that scrolling down um, most of the time you can just apply at schools and they'll just pay you cash you don't really need to worry about a work visa and anyways if you go to their FAQs you can get some of the lower down um, for 2018 they're they're all full up you can't apply but you can apply for next year and um, here they tell you you need a TP1 visa um, and then here they tell you like how much money to have when you get there you'll need enough money to fly there um, and you need enough money for travel insurance was going by what they're saying 300 for the full year or 150 for a semester uh, it's um, mostly health insurance if I understand right and you, you need to bring enough money to uh, you know do whatever you got to do if there's an emergency they're saying a thousand bucks I'm saying a thousand a couple thousand whatever you think you'll need to get home in an emergency or something and to get an apartment and or whatever you plan on doing there travel expenses maybe on the weekend um, they pay a stipend I think it's five or six hundred there's a lot of different programs that do the same thing in, in, uh, in um, Columbia, but they don't all pay the same. Some are three or four hundred, and then they'll pay you meals separately. Uh, some are five hundred. Anyways, let's see what we got here. Yeah, they pay one million five hundred thousand, which is about five hundred dollars. As an example, they show you, you know, make a little bit less than that. Um, People really do live on three or four hundred a month, but usually they have several people in a household that do that. Anyways, um, they give an example here of you can expect to pay three hundred thousand in rent or to six hundred thousand. Six hundred thousand would be a lot nicer, but the really nice place is going to be a million or more, which would be most of your salary. Um, but you can rent a room for three hundred thousand and get it. According to them, you get a, a furnished place for six hundred thousand, and it's just like Mexico meals cost two or three bucks at the low end five or six bucks in the middle and eight to twelve at the high end anyways um they give you examples of what things cost here on this page i'll leave the link in the description as far as the website just want to go back to where we were on the frequently asked questions um anyways if you scroll down they give you an example of the difference between bogota and a rural and a rural area rural areas cost all less and uh in the city, you're going to pay half a million or up. Keep in mind, if you hunt around for rooms for rent in an apartment or in a house, it can be a little bit less than even what they're saying here. Here's the safety of Colombia, a lot safer than Mexico right now. And you know, you can't bring your pets or your children. Then they talk about insurance requirements, and here it is Do you need a tussle or, t or tuffle? No, but it helps. According to them, they like it, but if you don't, they'll still consider you and you don't need a college degree and then they give you how to apply and whatnot and then they charge a program deposit so that's how most of these programs work Greenheart isn't the only one by any stretch of the imagination it's just an example of one of many that have that are out there you can search for them online or you, there's this young lady who has a report for thirty dollars uh, I think and she gives you all the details too um, let me just go here's another one I think this is a more religious based one but this is in Columbia too it's heart for change you can google that or I'll leave a link in the description 
Um, some of their programs require a college degree, some of them don't. Um, but keep in mind, when people say they need a college degree, a lot of times um, they're flexible and they don't if they don't have anyone for the region of the country that they need. Like in rural Colombia, it's just like rural Thailand. Maybe they say they need a degree, but they're more flexible. You know, if no one's applying, like in Thailand, for example, if you're applying for a Chai Mei, you're going to need a degree and, you know, and all that stuff. And the rural areas, no. Anyways, um, here they give you two meals a day. You teach on site. Um, they pay you, I think, three, three hundred, a little under four hundred dollars. Plus, they include two meals a day in that, so it's a little different. Anyways, um, just some more information on this. Um, whether it's hard for change, or where they go to Columbia, or where they go anywhere else, a lot of these programs, um, if you don't have a college degree, um, if you have a tussle, that's even or tuffle, that's even better. But if you can just get that, even the internet ones that people say aren't any good, even that will get you in the door. Um, as far as Southeast Asia goes, you can teach in uh, Cambodia and Thailand, Vietnam. I know quite a few people who don't have college degrees, but they have a TEFL and they teach it. The thing with um, Cambodia now, they recently changed their visa laws, so to get a six, to get a a, a business visa, you need a six-month visa, business visa where previously you didn't, and you need to pay a, the ten percent tax now, which when you go there, it's pretty explanatory. But the schools, some will get you a visa, some won't without a college degree, but um, most people just work under the table. Now, as far as working under the table in Thailand and, and Cambodia, 80 to 90 percent of the teachers are doing that. Um, so, if that's your dream or you want to do that, um, I would just say go for it. But if you're going to be teaching without a degree in the big cities, it's much, much more difficult now. But there's a workaround like in China and Thailand, like you may not qualify for a visa if you don't have a college degree, but sometimes they can get you one. They can get you a, a visa, but it's not a it's not a work visa. They sometimes do that. I don't want to talk too much about that. Some people uh, it irritates them. But um, like a teaching assistant, uh, they have just these different things you can you can get. But you're not technically having a work permit for being a teacher, but you actually teach. But you have like some kind of voluntary type visa thing. Um, just a few words on who this could work for. Like if you're an expat and you have a side income or um, something you do on side, because these salaries are pretty low, that's why I don't really suggest it. Um, this can work for that um, if you have a side income because these incomes are actually pretty low. This is also for people who want to learn how to how to be of service in the community, how to um, pass on your skills as far as being a teacher and teaching something. One thing when you when you go to these countries, you can also get side income by uh, being a tutor, like a math tutor or an English tutor to kids. A lot of times you can make actually pretty good money. In, in Asia, it's sometimes 25 bucks an hour. Even uh, in Guatemala, where I live, I know quite a few people who teach online who charge about $25 an hour for tutoring, mostly English tutoring, conversational Spanish tutoring. Uh, so that could work for a person like who has, who has enough time in the day to, to do a side hustle or a side income. Um, if you do certain kind of trading strategies, that's what I do. It can work. But if you had to rely on this kind of income um, long term, I wouldn't really suggest it. It's, it's okay if you're younger. It's okay if you're retired and you have a pension coming in. But uh, this would work perfectly for people who don't have a lot of money and have a side income or are building a side income on the side. They can get their expenses paid for by someone else. They can learn a new skill. They can be of service in a local community. Um, and while you're there being of service, you're going to meet a lot of people. That's another reason to do them. Despite the low pays, you'll meet a lot of people. You'll make a lot of connections. And when you build up trust in these institutions and these societies, you can start a business. Uh, you, you'll you get the contacts and the knowledge to start a business. Whereas if you just go in, you don't know anyone. That's how people usually get ripped off. Um, that's why I suggest, you know, to use this as a strategy. Like if you have a part-time income trading, that's what I do. Um, you can just use this as a sideline income to, to live overseas, um, to pay your expenses and to build up contacts. You all can use the opportunity to, to hustle, like if you want to be a tutor or if you want to meet people, uh, build up contacts and start up a business. This can uh, give you the breathing room you need as far as living expenses if you don't have a lot of capital or a lot of money saved up. I just My channel is for like expats who are not on a huge budget. This is why I'm putting that out there. So um, there's, This is by no means for Columbia. These two programs I showed you are by no means all of them. There's many. And it's the same in China. Like in China, they have a, quite a few programs for people who don't have college degrees. Now, 
it's controversial because every once in a while the Chinese government says they're going to start forcing a law, but it seems like half of China, you have to have a degree and half, the other half of China you don't. But here's the thing, if you get in and you're young enough, or if you get the visa, even if you only get the visa in the, for a year or two, it's good because you can get there. You can start a side hustle of, of tutoring. Most tutors I know make $25 an hour and up there. Um, you can save a, a big chunk of chain. You can use that to start your business. That's another thing. If you, if you go to Asia and you start and you teach English and you have a strategy of, of using your savings to buy homes in the U.S. to rent out, that's one strategy, or to start your business or, or whatever use for your trading accounts. Now I'm more of a trader and I use my income for uh you know various things but sometimes uh, real estate. But anyways, you see where I'm going with this. Like if you get into China and you get a visa, even if they change the uh rules, you can if you build up enough trust there and if you've met enough people, you can have a, a nice tutoring business that pays you much, much better than a teaching job. Just in China they they can pay a couple thousand, but usually they want you to start out at twelve hundred if you don't have a lot of experience, if you don't have a degree, but what's cool is they'll train you, they'll get you the work permit <coughs> or and the visa, and then you, and you know, when you're not doing that, you can build up your side hustle, you can work on your side income, and you can do some tutoring. Uh, in Latin America, the money isn't as great, but on five or six hundred bucks, you can live not everywhere. You're not gonna live high on the hog. You're gonna you're gonna you be renting a room or renting a small studio apartment, um, and tutoring locally usually doesn't pay that much two to five to ten bucks an hour it just depends now the thing about Latin America is there's a lot of Asian immigrants you can tutor them for twelve to twenty five bucks an hour if you have that as a niche some of my friends do that just to put that out there um, there's different niches you can do like tutoring and math but in Latin America in general um, you're not going to make as much money as Asia as a tutor or as an English teacher uh, but but there are opportunities if you don't have a college degree and you want an official government program to be involved in a visa and all that. If you don't, just you can just fly in to Colombia or Mexico or, or anywhere almost. And if you go to enough schools and apply, they'll eventually hire you. The salary is no good, usually not too much, five or six hundred bucks. And some of these schools usually don't pay you in full; they only pay you half, anyways. That's why I don't really recommend it. That's why if you are going to teach English, I really think you should. Uh, be a tutor, an English tutor, or a conversational tutor. Uh, you make a lot more money. You can do it online, and you can have people paying in advance, so you don't have to worry about not getting paid. Anyways, this video has gone on long enough. Um, leave a comment, subscribe, like, share. Tell me what you think. Thanks.